here we are and you really got to check this out this is a hj47 but it's a four-door akana these were built in western australia for a purpose the mining community a few other things there ain't too many left and so to um, get one of these you've done pretty damn well and paul and his family are up here at Mr. Land Cruiser. They've come all the way from uh, northeast, northeast, Victoria, northeast yeah. Victoria, for a holiday in the Sunshine Coast. They come up here a bit. The 40 Series got quite the community. We're friends. We go way back, so it's really good to see them up here. And they've stopped in. We're going. Uh, we're going on a boat tomorrow, so we're going for a swim. Everything up uh, Noosa River. Yeah. But until then, we want to have a look at this uh, 47, which uh, you found in Melbourne, didn't you? You found a couple of Arcanas. Two of them in the shed, yeah, in Moorabbin, yeah. near Melbourne, yeah. yeah, there was two together. And they were in pretty bad way. This was um, on a 47 chassis? It was on a 47 chassis that was rusted out. And yeah. what's happened? You just pull her apart? Yeah, I'll put on an 80 series chassis. Yeah, yep, yep. yep. And um, it came with the 1.8Z? Yeah, it already had the 1.8Z in the five-speed gearbox. Yep. So I just pulled, it, pulled that out and put in the 80 series chassis. Yeah, yeah nice. And um, Paul ran the 1.8Z for a little while, wasn't happy, turboed it, wasn't happy. So what's under there now? I put a 1HDT in it, yeah, fully rebuilt 1HDT with a yep. high-flow turbo and just been a whistle and soot for a airbox, uh, exhaust. We um, might have a close look at their work in a minute. Yeah, it's pretty will. damn nice, nice hey. Nice, and nice you work. just threw this motor in just before just this trip. Before we left. Yeah, so yeah, the yeah. test run is yeah. driving it from, from Victor, Victor to, to Queensland. Queensland. And you made it. Here you are. Yeah, that's Got the right. whole family. Yeah. And there's some pretty unique things about this one. There's um, a lot going on outside. Um, Paul's, this was a rust bucket, including the chassis. So you've torn the whole thing down. Yeah. Um, and then rebuilt it. Yeah. You've um, put your own, he's put his own personal touches in here, like he's hand fabbed the guards, yeah. he's done the, um, the sliders, he's made the uh, widened, um, they're widened but they're steel, so he's used two guards to widen them out. Yeah. A lot of personal touches. Uh, you and a good mate, Rob, have pretty much. Yeah, uh, my Rob helped me paint it and put it together. Yeah. Put it together, and yeah. here you are. And yeah. I mean, tell me that bull bar is off a 55. 55 yeah. Yep, it was in a rollover, and so one of the only things left in it was the bull bar, and it fits perfect for the uh, the width for the 80 chassis. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, well, we might lift the bonnet and have a closer look. Would you get a load of that? The one HDT. And look at that pipe work. So you come up here, none of this pipe work was on. No, nothing was there. You I pulled into Harley, Harley's at Whistle and Soot, and we spent oh days and nights, two or three days and nights in the shed. Uh, full airbox setup in the in the cooler pipes, in the cooler uh, intake pipe, and a full exhaust, three and a half inch exhaust stainless, all the way to the back. And that is mad. Pipes out the back. Yeah. So um, this intercooler to fit, you had already recessed the radiator back. Yeah. I'll so there's it. already that room. There was the room already there. I pushed everything back as far as I could in the engine bay when I mounted the engine to make sure that to try and have enough room for a cooler. For an intercooler. And because yeah. you've got the red dot, there he's got the um, red dot aircon up on the roof. Yeah. Because that's up there, you don't need any. Um... I don't need a condenser in the front. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. I, I made sure. I tried to have as much room. It was ready to go. Yeah. And the R and D and the work that um, you guys and that um, Harley at Whistle and Soot's done on this is mad. Hey, so um, you're telling me about your EGTs? Yeah, I was getting sort of 600 EGTs coming here up the hills from Victoria, and now going up the hills, I'm I'm lucky to reach sort of 400, 450. So it's dropped the EGTs massively. That yeah. is awesome. That is mad. And um, also pulls on little things. I noticed that is an 80 series booster. Um, so you obviously got disc brakes. Yeah, four wheel disc brakes off the 80 series. Yep, the came out factory booster. for that chassis. Yeah, that's right. Yep, so you upgraded the booster. Yeah. And I do also notice, we'll pop this down, because I noticed the height of the thing, you haven't had a, um, a, a body lift at all, it's all the suspension. No body lift, no, just terrain tamer, four coils from, four coil springs from terrain tamer and the shock, shockies as well. Yep, so. and you've rebushed everything. And, yeah, it's all been rebushed. Yep, well yeah. she definitely stands tall. Yeah. Um, otherwise underneath there's, um, you've got the twin exhaust now on yeah, this, she yeah. comes out in a V or? Harley bought. Harley, uh, we put two, two pipes out the back. Yeah, yep. yeah. And the only other thing underneath you, um, saying earlier you might put water tank or something later, but for now it's got dual battery, both batteries. Two batteries. Um, that's another yeah. thing Whistle and Soot Custom did yeah, good with Paul. Yeah, the battery tray under the chassis, as well as he does a three and a half inch exhaust, which no one really does. Yeah. That's three and a half all. I've even got um, that on my 2H, yeah, so he customs yeah. a lot of stuff like that. So, stuff, yeah. yeah, he does mad stuff. Yeah, he does a lot of good stuff. Yeah. So, um, Paul is up here with his family. They've got the three kids. 
And so this is set up for touring. I might go and show you inside and we'll have a closer look. So this is mad. Soon as I open the door, tools and um, parts start falling out. Paulie's been doing uh, roadside work, you can tell. He's a hands-on guy. He's just got this on the road. And, um, but anyway, the interior, the interior is a 1984 HJ 47 dash. So it is, um, the dash itself is original. It's got the taco, the clock. It's the more modern one, but there's been a, a lot gone into um, the build that's changed things. We'll start, I'm leaning on the seat. He's got the um, XR6 or XR8 seats out of a Falcon and um, the adapter plates to make these uh, bolt straight in. There's a few people doing them. But Paul's gone for the uh, McKinnon's Cruiser ones. Uh, McKinnon's have them on the shelf. So um, Paul and the family were up here at an event and um, Billy bought these and fitted them out in a four wheel drive park and they've never come out. They're really happy. You will also notice the steering wheel is uh, out of the 80 series. All the, um, the, the, the ignition cover and everything still 40, but he's gone the uh, 80 series steering wheel modernized things and on the dash he's got uh, the pro like the tjm pro lockers so here are the switches coming out through the dash um they're an air locker so he's got the compressor there as well and otherwise the, the dash is pretty plain he does have the parcel shelf and with the, they're traveling so he keeps everything up on the shelf as they're traveling uh, he's got oil pressure egts and the boost all up on the um on the parcel shelf as well and an overhead console the overhead console's got a, it's got a cool old retro UHF in there that um, isn't set up yet. Paul's going to hook that up. Just give it a bit of a retro look and interior lights, speakers, just your general stuff like that. I will also mention that the red dot is the air conditioning that comes down through the roof. And for a family, it's, it's way more convenient than a knee freezer or just the, um, the people in the front receiving the air. So it was Paul's idea and he's... Um, put extra structure in the roof to hold that and they're loving it. So this is the whole family. Their youngest is 18 months old and hence the, the baby seat. So they're just, um, and he's been traveling since a younger age. So they're just um, people that get out, enjoy the 40 series, enjoy the community and enjoy Australia. And I love seeing this type of thing on the road. So one thing I didn't mention while I was in, inside was um, when we do walk arounds, we talk about custom parcel shelves a lot and uh and people i get a lot of comments where do you get the shelf who made the shelf this shelf is done by uh chris at the 40 factory down in victoria so i'm um, looking up on facebook and they've got uh cup holders and everything going on there you can see how cluttered it is that it does a really good job um, a couple things on the outside before i wrap it up is uh, because of the stance on this and how well it sits it handles the um it's got the maxis there are uh, 315s or 35 inch tyres and it handles them really well. Um, he sussed all the steering and suspension out. It's a, it actually handles really well. It's pulling over a tonne of camper trailer and it's lugged it the whole way. I don't think they've used it yet, so um, that'll, they'll be breaking it out soon. And the big box on the back, there's, I'm not gonna lift it up. There's not much to show in there, but it is where the fridge is. It's where, um, they keep some luggage and they've got the inverter and a DC to DC in there. So that's the back of the vehicle. And, but this is a HJ47. This is the Akana, the one that, um, again, a lot of us, I've wanted one for years. People that own 40 series, we all want one of these. This is very, very cool. Well done, Paul, and well done your family.